Learn these three edits to never take damage again. I wanna show you something unique. Everyone knows the simple right hand peek in peanut butter, so I wanna show you three new edits and why they are arguably even better than the corner edit. Number one, let's start with the cone jump edit. This is one of my favorite edits since you are so protected, but no one actually thinks you are. It's quite deceiving. As you can see, I just did an awful four tile corner edit, which would usually leave me very exposed, but that's why you add the jump and the cone in. The cone beneath you will give you initial elevation, and then once you jump, you practically get higher than the entire opening in the wall when you're at your peak. So yes, you actually are fully protected. Even though it is a really wide edit, you'll be fine if you jump. Of course, that means you will have a hard time seeing the enemy too, but that's where peeker's advantage comes in huge. The person moving will always see the enemy first because of peeker's advantage. This means the game's netcode registers the input of your system before it has time to be registered by any other player's system. It's only a couple milliseconds of an advantage, but when you're quickly moving due to the gravity of a jump, this couple millisecond advantage is huge. Not to mention the right hand advantage of setting up this peak too. Both players have cameras over their right shoulders, so the peeker's camera is facing that opening in the wall, and the enemy's camera is facing towards the wall part. When I'm peeking on the outside, I like to jump to their right so I can fall and see their head as quickly as possible due to the edit on the wall curving upwards and the cone beneath curving downwards. So here we are in replay mode and I've set up my gameplay capture inside and outside the box to show you the difference. As I jump, confirm the edit and fall down, I've started a timer to show you how long the peeker has before the enemy sees them. So technically the peeker can actually see the enemy's foot the whole time, but we'll start the timer when our peeker is fully covered on the enemy screen and we'll end the timer when the enemy can see our peeker again on his way down. 1.25 seconds. And keep in mind, I'm running this replay at 50% speed, so the peeker's advantage here is actually half that, which is 0.625 seconds. But that's still a long time, and this is kind of laughable too, because the peeker has a full kill shot at this point, and the enemy can only see the peeker's toe. So unless our enemy here is Dan Schneider and has a thing for getting shots of feet, I think we'll probably be safe. <laughs> and actually, now that I think about it, this toy soldier skin has a plastic on its boot that wouldn't even be on a regular skin. So it's even safer than what we clocked it in at. But now let's look at the time at how long it takes for each person's head to be in frame. We'll again start this one as soon as our peeker is fully covered. And it took 1.33 seconds for the peeker to see the enemy's head and 1.550 seconds for the enemy to see the peeker's head. If we do a little subtraction, that is a 0.217 second advantage in 50% speed. Or if we speed it up to full speed, that is a 0.19 second advantage. And I'm sure I don't have to point out the obvious here, but our bot literally has a hundred pellets in his head and is dead before he even got a chance to see the peeker's full head. So don't miss your shot and you'll be fine. And I recommend doing this after you've already gotten your opponent weak. Since you do have that advantage, a kill shot on your enemy will keep you completely safe and healthy. But what does an almost 0.2 second advantage get you if you're not going to kill him? Exactly, if he's not already weak or if you don't hit that kill shot, you guys will just trade damage at that point since he'll shoot you 0.2 seconds later unless you can reset your wall fast enough. So I really like doing this outside of a box when I'm pushing, but you can also do this from inside a box if you don't have a floor above your head. If you just have that cone, you can kind of jump into it. So here we are in a real game to show you and I'm able to jump into the peak of the cone completely covering myself while I confirm that edit. I then fall down get a nice shot on the enemy and reset the wall before he's able to shoot me. Okay, but on to peak number two. This one I really like, the U-Ramp Edit Approach. This one is really good if you're always getting surprise edited on when you're trying to wall replace or just straight pickaxe it down. And if you're messing with the vibe of the video so far, please drop a like and invest in the channel to stay up to date with me. And a huge thanks to those that have been using my creator code recently. But this one is good for when someone else is boxed up and you want to safely approach their box for a wall take. You want to place a ramp down like this and a wall down like this. You then want to edit a four tile corner edit on that wall and a full U ramp edit on that stair. So it should look something like this. The reason you want to do this is so you can have a nice right hand peek to swing and crouch behind with that half stair right in front of you and the wall to your side. And you of course could just do a half stair edit too instead of the full U ramp, but I like doing the U ramp since it gives you some protection above your head in case you either get third partied or your initial opponent decides to edit out up top. 
So using that U ramp, you want to swing in this specific spot so you don't hit your own stair since the hitbox on the U ramp is super weird. But once you find that sweet spot, it is a super protective spot to hit from, and if the enemy edits on you, you can just crouch or move to the right. Here's an in game example of me doing that one too. Okay, so here we are in a realistic 1v1, and we're on a ground level, sort of doing this box fight mentality, and I do pull out the U ramp combo. I really like to do this on people who have better ping than me because if I'm not able to take their wall, I have something easy to crouch behind. That's why in this fight, when I'm not able to take his wall after double swinging, I am able to crouch down and I'm safe. And thank god I was because he edited out on me to shoot me. Okay, and moving on to edit number three, the stair floor edit. A lot of people know about this one because of the famous player Martaz, but I'm going to be taking it a step further and showing you how to do it and how to counter it with advice from FNCS winner Peter Bot. What you want to do to set this up is a stair air beneath you, a floor above you, and edit this back tile or even both of them, and from here you can now put a stair above you or an edited cone. It creates this very small gap in which you can jump and shoot from while never really exposing yourself. So it's super safe and super tough to counter, but I will show you how to do that too. Although here's a couple examples of me using it in game. This is actually from a creative match earlier today, and I like to show this one because it emphasizes how fast you need to be sometimes. Obviously when you're editing the floor, it becomes much weaker as a fresh edited build. That means the enemy can shoot it out really quickly. So in this one, I'm able to hit him for big damage as he takes out that floor. It wasn't a kill shot, but it was still huge damage. This is actually against a different opponent, but again, the same Martaz peak. So this one, he actually repeats it three times. So you can really abuse this against someone who isn't paying attention. I hit him once for big damage, but he breaks out my floor and I replace it. I get a sneaky edit shot on, and then he wants to go for a third peak and try me on this. This guy clearly didn't know how to counter the Martaz peak, which I'm about to show you but this is so good against players so that is one you need to get used to and the other edits i've talked about in this video aren't super commonly used by other players but this one is you will get martaz edited on in probably half your 1v1s against good players so you need to know how to counter it but don't overthink it the counter to this is exactly how you'd expect <laughs> just shoot in that gap and you'll hit their head for max damage although i will say you do need to stand in a specific spot to do it so let me just have fncs winner peter bot take it over to explain you right when someone does like here look here, look when someone does an edit to you look you're on the flip side right obviously you can't time it perfectly when they're doing it right like when you're trying to do it on purpose but when they do it oliver you jump and then shoot and you max pump them i'm not even trolling trust me bro just jump and when shoot you're... every time look 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 ready i'm gonna take it building up ready bro you have to be like right here you have to be like yeah, here yeah. and then jump and shoot okay, okay. yeah like yeah, that's what you need to do every time but i don't know how you're hiding max and I also want to show you me doing this to someone, to a real player. So this guy's down below and edits the floor close to me first and I hit a big shot on him so I now think he's gonna go for a safer peak like the Martaz peak. I'm correct about this and he jumps and I hit him, although it isn't a max like Peter Bot talks about, but then he does it again and I kill him. If you like these tips and tricks videos, these are my top tips to adapt to the new season. And in case you want to see some more gameplay of me trying out these tips, I just played in the solo cash cup where I aggroed hella players and actually did pretty good. So that's right here. Again, please use code read the ninja or another favorite small creator code to help us out. Drop a like if you've enjoyed, invest in the channel, and on that note, I'm signing off.